Welcome everybody, Brother Dan Goodwin here. You're watching the God's Final Jubilee program. This is January the 23rd, 2019, and the Lord is coming back soon, and you better be ready. Very sobering discussion today to share on the broadcast. <clears throat> A sad day here for America. Um, you know, the Bible talks about perilous times shall come in 2 Timothy. Uh, let me turn to that here. I can find it real quick. Perilous times in the last days, the Bible says, perilous times shall come. In chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, it says this, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That word perilous means danger. Uh, it comes from the root word peril, obviously uh, danger, peril. Um, in the last days, Paul says, this know also, in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And it gives a list of things here. Uh, boasters, proud, blasphemers, coveters, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. My friends, do you know what just happened yesterday in the state of New York? The place we call the Big Apple, because uh, really New York City is the state of New York. Most of the rest of the rural area of New York, many of them are not uh, quite so left-wing. But uh, New York City is pretty much uh, run by the leftist. Uh, I don't know why we want to call them conservative and liberal anymore, or Democrat and Republican. They're, they're evil. They're absolutely evil. Uh, do you know the law they just passed in the, in, the, in the New York State Legislature, signed by the governor on yesterday? They, they signed into law that a woman can kill a baby in her womb all the way up until birth. I mean, she can be in the operating room having birth pains, getting ready to deliver, and suddenly decide to have an abortion, and they can wheel her out to the next room next door and abort that baby legally in the United States of America right now in the state of New York, signed into law. You can watch some of the, some of the videos, uh, the news reports. You can see them. Uh, as, as the governor is signing, you can see the people clapping in the background and cheering, and you can see some of the women, uh, women legislators of New York. You can see them uh, clapping with big smiles on their faces. God help America. God help America. Uh, what in the world? Why would we cheer and clap about aborting and murdering a baby moments before it's born? Um, you know, how much further are we going to go? Are we going to are we going to have uh, deliver the baby, lay it on a table, and allow it to die, like the guy in Pennsylvania was doing? Um, the uh, Gor whatever that guy's name is, remember Gorshik or whatever his name was, uh, that that filthy animal in Pennsylvania, the abortion doctor that was uh, found guilty of uh, murdering all them babies that were born, and uh, look that that he they're going to need to let him out of jail. Because uh, the laws that are being passed now, he's going to be found innocent. In fact, the, go the government, the taxpayers are going to owe him money for, for libel, uh, for destroying his life, for putting him in jail. Be uh, because pretty soon we're going to find that we were, we were the animals for putting him in jail. Did you know that yesterday, January the 22nd, was an important day in history? Do you know what happened uh, 47 or 46 years ago, yesterday, the day that the governor of New York signed into law the murdering of babies all the way up till uh, birth. Did you know that Roe v. Wade was passed and signed into law and became the law of the land that it would now be legal to abort your, your baby? Did you know that, that the date of that was not only 1973, it was January 22nd. So they picked a fitting day, didn't they, to, to declare this new law in New York. They, they planned it on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. On January 22nd, 1973, the U.S. Supreme Court announced its decision in Roe v. Wade, a challenge to a Texas, Texas statute that made it a crime to form, perform an abortion unless a woman's life was at stake. Um, but you can you can find if I bother I'm reading on Planned Parenthood Roe v Wade its history and impact um, so um, 
So, in, in, I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Um, that, that America has stooped to this level. It's bad enough. Uh, before, before January 22nd of this year, the law in New York was, uh, the maximum was 24 weeks. 24 weeks, which is what, uh, uh, six months, I think? Um, four times six, 24. 24 weeks, six months. That's, that's, and that's still murder. But look, uh, that wasn't good enough for them. We, we've got to murder babies all the way up until they're ready to be born. And uh, um, so this is what happened in our country. Now, I want to ask you a few questions here tonight. And I want you to consider what I'm going to say here. I want you, number one, to, to think about this. Who's to blame for this? Who's to blame for this new law that was just passed yesterday in New York on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade um, 46 years ago? Um, after over 50 million human babies, human beings have been butchered, burned alive with saline so uh, solutions or, or pulled out with, uh, with instruments limb by limb from the womb. Uh, or pulled out by the feet and, and a knife uh, scalpel pulled, pulled in behind the skull before the head comes out and slit the spine and, and, and murder the little baby. Uh, 46 years from that day uh, that we began this, this animalistic process, uh, this inhuman, ungodly process of killing our own young and killing our babies. Um, so Who's to blame for this abortion crisis and this, this murderous law that's been passed? Who's to blame, you might ask? Uh, you, you might say Planned Parenthood is to blame. Planned Parenthood caused this. Well, Planned Parenthood has blood on its hands. I won't deny that. They're wicked people, and those doctors that, that perform abortions are wicked people. And, uh, and, 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 and I'm not going to defend Planned Parenthood or the doctors and the nurses there and, and the people who uh, operate those clinics. Uh, they're, they're, they're wicked people and they're doing a wicked service. They're committing murder. Uh, but they're not fully to blame here. Um, uh, what about the politicians? How about the, the, you say, well, the Democrats are to blame. Well, there's plenty of blood on the Democrats' hands. I might add there's plenty of blood on the Republicans' hands, too. The Republicans have had both houses of Congress several times uh, and did nothing, nothing. And uh, so there's blood on the politicians' hands, no doubt about that. But who put those politicians there? That's right, the people in this country did. So, so who's to blame? Uh, well, the voters are to blame, you say. I mean, it, it's the voters, the people who vote to, who don't, don't, don't realize the issues and, and don't think before they vote. I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to shock some of you. Who's to blame, you might ask? I'll tell you who's to blame. The people of God, the church of God is to blame. Yes, there's blood on the hands of the abortion doctors and the clinics and the workers at the clinics and the politicians and those who pull the lever and vote for these politicians. There's blood on those hands. Yes, indeed, there's blood on those nine Supreme Court justices that were in power in 1973. And uh, the fact that uh, th they voted and, uh, and okayed the murder of these little babies. Uh, there's blood on their hands too, yes. But where did it all begin? I'll tell you where it begins. It begins when the salt has lost its savor. It, begin, it began when God's people lost their influence in the, in the communities. It began a long time ago when the churches of God and the Christians of America uh, sat in their living rooms and ignored what was going on out on the street corner and ignored the, the, the laws and ignored the uh, immorality. And uh, I'll tell you where it started, when the preachers quit preaching against sin. And when, God, when, the, when the man of God quit, uh, quit preaching the truth of God from the pulpits of God. And uh, that's where it all began. Uh, I ask you, 1973, I was 13 years old. Let me ask you, where were our parents in 1973 when, when this law was passed? Where were the churches? Where were the pastors? Where were the people of God? Where was the outcry? 
Uh, why didn't uh, why didn't crowds and multitudes rush the capital and drag those people out, tar and feather them out on the street, and uh, and send them home and 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 bring in new representatives and uh, and fix the problem? Why didn't uh, why didn't the churches go and storm the uh, abortion clinics and and stand out on the street corners and and may go in and drag the doctor out, tar and feather him and put him in his car and tell him you ever come back? We're going to do more than that. Where were the where was the outrage? Where was the where was the talk show host and the and the preachers and the radio ministry? Where was the outcry? I'm telling you, long before the world goes over the cliff, God's people lose their influence. So, who's to blame? God's people are to blame. Um, well, does does this law affect me? You say, the, what, the, how, what effect does this have on me? I'll tell you what effect it has on you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34, it says this, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to your government. Is that what the Bible says? No, I've, 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 I've misread that on purpose. That's not what it says. It is a reproach on our government, but that's not what the Bible says. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to the president. It is a reproach on the president, but that's not what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sins of the nation come back as a reproach upon the whole nation. And uh, you, you know, we, you, you, many of many of God's people sit back and say, "Well, I didn't pass that law, and I'm not for that." Yeah, but what did you do? What did I do? What ha what are we doing? To to uh, I mean, why aren't we on our faces mourning and uh, and begging God for His mercy tonight? Because we think it doesn't affect us. Let me tell you, child of God, it does affect you. You say, "Well, it'll affect the world," but I'm I'm saved. Well, let me tell you something. There's, there's several stories in the Bible, and I, I won't be able to give you all of these, but um, let me take you, first of all, back to um, 2 Samuel. Um, 2 Samuel, a very interesting story happens. David is the king. David's a pretty good guy, isn't he? How, how many of you would like to have David for our president? Uh, but yet David was human. David committed a sin. Do you know the whole nation suffered for David's sin? He numbered the people in 2 Samuel chapter 24. Um, he, uh, David numbered the people against the will of God. And, uh, and some trouble came with that. Verse 10, David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, basically, without getting into the whole story, he, he, didn't, he wasn't trusting in God. He got out ahead of God. And he was going to do something in his own strength instead of with the, you know, in faith in God. Um, and, and he says, uh, um, David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done, in that I have done, and now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Um, the seer Gad had come to him and, and told him God was going to ju bring judgment. Uh, look what it says in verse 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed, and there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. 70,000 men died because David sinned. The leader, the captain of the host, the, uh, the president, the prime minister, whatever you want, whatever label, the king, whatever label you want to put him on him. He did wrong. He sinned, and God judged the people. Seventy thousand people died. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Um, you know, you, the king, the people that, that are in charge of our nations. Do you know who puts them there? God does. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it with us wherever you go. God puts in power king, the kings of the world. Uh, I believe that God put Trump in office. For, for such a time as this. So that's a pretty sobering story, wouldn't you say, in the Bible? About a leader, a person of, the, of importance in the nation doing wrong and the whole nation suffers for that? 
Hey, did the people not suffer as a result of King Saul, who the people put in power against God's wishes? They wanted a king, so God gave them a king, and that king became a thorn in their flesh. And uh, listen, we're, we're accountable, and we'll answer to God for some things that our leaders do. One reason is God gives us the leaders we deserve. Um, it could be that if we we pray more and we get we the church does its job, we'd have some different leadership in Washington. We'd have some different congressmen. But churches don't win souls anymore. Most of them, churches are not out there evangelizing. God's people, most most of God's people, have never won a soul to Jesus Christ. Most of God's people don't don't carry tracks. You you don't share your faith with anybody, and you wonder why the world around us is going to hell. It's us. It's God's people that are the problem. There's another story in the Bible. I won't turn to it, but in the book of Genesis, you know the story. Um, uh, Genesis chapter um, uh, 18. Abraham and the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember the angel, the angel of the Lord came and decided to, to let Abraham know what, what he was getting. He was getting ready to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. Going to wipe it out. Remember, Abraham kept asking, Lord, if you find 50 righteous people, will you, will you still kill them all? And the Lord said, nope, I'll spare the land for, the, for those 50. And went all the way down to 10 people, remember? He said, Lord, if you find 10 righteous, will you still destroy them? And God said, no, I won't destroy it if I find 10. And then he went his way. The sad part is, God didn't find 10 righteous, did he? Now, I think righteous is more than just being saved. I think righteous is, is saved people who are living for God, living right. And God didn't find ten, so God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The lesson there is, had there been some salt, God would have held back his wrath. What's the number here in America of the, of the amount of saved people that God, that is keeping God's judgment from our nation? And nobody knows the answer to that. But could it be that that number is, is now to a point where God is going to pour out some wrath on our nation? We are now going to kill little babies just before they're born. We're already killing them you know, six months and earlier. We're already selling body parts to, on the open market. That's a proven fact. It's been filmed. They're selling body parts to, to other people. Uh, we're already committing these terrible crimes. And, but now we're going a step further. Well, I mean, what, where do we go from here? Um, I guess sir, we start killing the old people. Uh, we start killing people who maybe don't have a purpose in society, or maybe they're a drag on society. They're not needed, but we'll, we'll get rid of them. Where does it end? You look, at, look, anybody that will kill a little baby in the womb, I don't care what you say, it's a, you're a monster. Those people in New York City standing there clapping as, as the governor signs, you're, you're a monster. You're a monster. Hey, I saw some of the women behind him there clapping with smiles on their faces. You know what you are? You're a monster. You're, I don't know any way to, other way to put it. You're an evil, wicked monster. That's what you are. Uh, that you, you, know, you know, God forbid that when you were a little babe in the womb, uh, how, come you were, how come you were allowed to be born? Uh, what, what, what was to keep you from being aborted and have your life snuffed out? You know, all the people that are for abortion, you know, all of them are survivors, they're, they're, they're alive. Uh, you know, there's nobody in the womb that's for abortion, but it, it's people who are alive now that, that, that are for abortion. There's another story in the Bible, the Battle of Ai. And this is in Joshua chapter 7, verses chap, the whole chapter, basically. Remember the Battle of Ai? Remember right after the Battle of Jericho, God, uh, God uh, tells them to take Ai and... Uh, but, but somebody had done something. Uh, um, at the Battle of Ai, um, somebody had uh, stolen some goods, remember? And uh, so I'm going to turn there real quick. Joshua chapter 7. And uh, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. And... Uh, and then uh, I'm going to move on down verse 8. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of Ramson passed on before. Verse 9. And the armed men uh, went before the priest and blew with the trumpets. And uh, 
Um, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall you proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout. Uh, so the ark of the Lord can pass the city going right about. Uh, verse 12, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets. Verse 15, It came to pass on the seventh day, uh, they rose uh, early uh, in dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Uh, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, they shouted and all, all this happened. You know the story here. And uh, the walls are going to fall down. This is, this is chapter 6 I'm reading. Uh, then you get to chapter 7. So that's the great battle of Jericho in chapter 6. Then you get to chapter 7. And a man named Achan comes along. And what does Achan do? He steals something, and he hides it in his tent. Now, God had already said you're not to take anything. Everything is, goes to the Lord. Achan stole, one man stole something, he hid it in his tent. And because of that, the, the men went and fought in the battle of, of Ai, a little battle, and they, and they lost. And the, the Bible says 36 men died. This is in verse 11. Uh, Israel has sinned, and they have they they have also transgressed my covenant. Um, all right, verse verse five. And the men of I, 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 Ai smote them, about thirty and six men. Thirty six men died. Why? Because of Ai uh, because of Achan's sin. All that just to point out the fact uh, that. Uh, and by the way, God, uh, when they found out Ai did it, he confessed. They took his whole family out and stoned them. Now there's a lot of lessons I could share from that. You know, nobody sins alone, my friend. Nobody sins alone. Society has a part to play. The church, the pastor, the deacons, the Sunday school teachers have a part in the divine influence of the, the children and the teenagers and the, and the people who come to that church and the, and the people out on the street corners. And you and I, as the salt and the light, we have a, an impact on people. And if we don't do our job, and they don't turn out right. Yes, they're, they're, Achan was stoned to death, he and his family. But, but he didn't die alone. 36 men died. His family, his wife, and his kids died. That's an awful story. But there are some spiritual lessons there. Uh, nobody sins alone. Somebody dropped the ball. Now, every man's accountable for his own sin. But I believe others are accountable for their lack of influence and their lack of prayer. No lack of, uh, of, uh, of preaching the truth. Pastors are going to answer to God one day for not preaching against sin and not preaching righteousness and not leading the church into a soul winning ministry. Um, all that just to say this, this, this abortion thing, who's, who's accountable here? Yes, the politicians are accountable. Yes, those Supreme Court justices are accountable. Yes, the, the, the news people and, the, and the, the mainstream media that pushes this slop on everybody and the uh, education systems, the colleges and, and uh, institutions of so-called higher education that have brainwashed people into this, they're accountable too. They're, they have blood on their hands. But, but who? where does it all go back to? It goes back to the fact that God's people have not done their job. We have not been the salt and the light in our communities, and our communities are going to the devil all around us because we sit in our church pews, and we're not the salt and the light that we're supposed to be, and the world crumbles around us. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So, on the 46th anniversary, of Roe v. Wade, the governor of New York signs that, that evil bill making abortion even worse as if it wasn't bad enough. Now, now they're going to murder that little baby all the way up until birth. And uh, for any cause, by the way, any cause, doesn't matter. I, I just don't want the baby, so kill it. And uh, I mean, my goodness. Uh, um, so, what, what can we do? We better get on our faces and we better pray. And we better start trying to influence the people around us again. You know, Second Chronicles, I'll close with this. Second Chronicles chapter 7. You've heard it a hundred times. You've heard it preached on. But I think, we, I think people miss the meaning of Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7 talks about, uh, we use it in our revival services. When we have revival meetings, we, we, we preach from Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven 
and uh, then we'll hear from heaven and we'll forgive their sins and we'll heal their land. What I want you to notice in this verse, he didn't say if the, if the homosexual crowd will hear. He didn't say, uh, he didn't say if, the, if the abortion crowd uh, will, will repent. What did he, who's he talking to? His people. He said, if my people, now who's his people? The blood-washed saints. In the Old Testament, they're still blood-washed saints, and they're trusting in the Messiah that will one day come. You and I uh, are looking back to the cross. We're trusting. We're blood-washed saints. This verse is talking about the people who have placed their faith in the Messiah. And he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. My friend, did you catch that verse? Did you catch that phrase I just said? Turn from their wicked ways. What does that mean? That means God's people can, can, can live wickedly. He's saying if my people will turn from their wicked ways. That's the answer, my friend. We've got to get on our faces. God's people got to get right with Him. And, uh, and you want God to heal our land? You want God to forgive our sin? We've got to get on our faces. It begins in the house of God. It doesn't begin at the abortion clinic. It doesn't begin with pan Planned Parenthood. It doesn't begin with the politicians in Washington or the president or the Supreme Court. It begins at the house of God. What are you going to do about it, my friend? It's a sad day in America. It may be that we've crossed the line in the sand. I don't know. It may be that the, the, the judgment of God is ready, getting ready to fall. I don't know. My friend, sobering time. Let's get right. Let's get praying. Let's ask God to forgive us. And let's evangelize again. Let's get people into the kingdom. I'll see you next time.